Hello, I'm Dustin Kruger with Kruger's Training Academy. Today I want to make this video to outline the possible fails and possible diagnostic steps you're going to have to perform on an ABPA or similar exam by AWWA or a county or state exam. Uh, essentially, the way it's set up, this is all the USC 10th with ABPA, and there's basically USC published a test fitting setup that almost all the proctors use, almost all the hosts use. You might encounter something different where they can fail check valve one by simply opening up and cutting the gasket or something like that. But most of them you're gonna run into are gonna have this same setup where there's four needle valves and some uh, T's and uh, 90s. The key thing to remember is not all of the diagnostics in the USC book are possible to encounter on an ABPA exam. Uh, we actually have the ABPA exam booklet here, page 313. It outlines exactly the possible outcomes you're gonna have on the RP. It's either gonna be leaky first, leaky second, malfunctioning differential pressure relief valve, leaky shutoff two, direction of flow or back pressure or property, proper operating assembly. Um, there's also further uh, limitations on that because the test fitting setup that USC get, uh, has published is not able to perform some of those failures. So notably the two things that or three things you're really probably not going to encounter unless they have a different set it, setup is multiple failures. So you can't have multiple failures per ABPA. So that they won't have back pressure with a leaky number two shut up, check valve or something like that. Like leaky number two with back pressure, leaky number two check valve. So you're not going to encounter that. So this really doesn't make sense to prepare for it. Even though in the USC book, some of the steps will be like, oh, well, if this is th both of these are failing, uh, you could encounter it in real life, but not on the test. Another one is an outlet shutoff valve with back pressure. In order to facilitate that, you would really need like a PRV here and loop around. But the test fitting setup that most people use, you won't see back pressure on the RP. Also a malfunctioning relief valve. In the field, obviously, uh, you know, relief valves fail all the time. But in order to facilitate that on an ABPA exam as a failure, you would really have to open it up and start cutting gaskets, which they almost never do and the test fitting setup won't allow you to do that. So you pr pretty much will never run into those. Also, a couple of um, diagnostics in the book that aren't really relevant to tr trying to practice. Exercising the, exercising the relief valve. If you do all of the steps in the USC 10th, you know, verbatim, you won't exercise the relief valve. That's why you open low first instead of high first. That's why you flush the test cocks while they're running. So. If you do everything perfect per the USC 10th, you won't exercise the relief valve. Um, also the disc compression, you might run into disc compression when you're doing the test, but it's it's a normal thing. It doesn't require any additional steps. So I wouldn't like write it down and have it in, in your notes as much. Um, so the first possible situation you're gonna have with the RP is a leaky first check. The way you would facilitate, the way the proctor would facilitate that, you might not see it in your on your end, you'll probably have it all set up. You open this one and open this one. And basically you're bypassing water through the first check. But when you walk up to take your test, you're gonna notice water coming out of the relief valve. So if you walk up and you notice that's coming out, the proper actual steps and diagnostics that you're gonna have is to do the first 15 steps. I think it's A through I. Uh, so essentially you're gonna do the normal rig, flush your test cocks, Attach your hoses. Attach high hose to two. Attach low hose to three. Attach your bypass hose to the low side bleed. We're using a Kruger Instruments TK2 test kit. Uh, you might be using a five valve test kit in your class. Largely everything's the same. Uh, we do have the two, two valve test kits for all of our courses, but uh, they are largely the same. If you're using the five valve, you can still watch this video, but we are using a two valve if you're interested. So essentially you do all the steps like normal in, in the case of a uh, leaking relief valve when you arrive, open three, open low bleed, open two, open high bleed, close outlet shut off, close high bleed, close low bleed. But what you'll notice is 
the differential pressure will drop when you do that way beyond the uh, apparent. And then it'll exercise the relief valve. So basically, according to USC 10th, when you're filling out these uh, test reports that way, you would mark leaky first check, relief valve and check valve two are not being able to complete it. So when you're filling out your test report on your exam, you would actually say leaking here and then just NA in both of these. Even though the sheet itself looks as though you can't do that, that's what you're gonna have to put. So if you put, if you actually go through and test second check valve and the relief valve and all that and open that 3.4 or whatever's on it, that's actually an incorrect uh, fill out. The next possible failure would be check valve two. So let's say these are not open, but in order to fail check valve two, you would open these two needle valves. So that's gonna bypass check valve two. So we're already hooked up here. And then we have the uh, exercise, the differential pressure relief valve. You hook this up. Um, we're not gonna demo that. You probably know how to do that. You open that and look. So essentially you close everything. You move this over here because it's already bled. Open test cock four, bring it back to a parent, open and close low bleed. And then you're gonna open high and you'll see it dropping. So normally you open the high bleed, it stays at the apparent. That indicates a leaky number two check valve against back pressure. So in the case that you do this, and this is what you come across, one trick that you might trip up on, you actually can't test number one check valve. So you essentially are gonna say, relief valve opening point, whatever you got, check valve one, whatever you got, or, or check valve one, you actually, you would think you would put the apparent, but you can't, you can't test check valve one. So you'd say check, relief valve opening point, whatever you got, check valve two leaking, check valve one cannot perform the test. So on the same sheet we just looked at, you have to put NA. If you put a number there, that's actually wrong and they could fail you for that. The last and by far the most complicated of these uh, diagnostics is the leaky outlet shutoff valve with flow. So essentially you, you're not gonna run into the leaky outlet shutoff valve with back pressure because it's impossible to simulate with this, but they can simulate it by opening this last one and this one. One thing you're gonna notice when you're taking your test probably is there's gonna be water running out of it. That's not necessarily indicative of an outlet shutoff valve leak being simulated because you could have a proper operating and it's like a you know pretend one. Um, but you're probably not gonna see that. So if you walk up, you're doing your APPA exam, you're doing the RP, you see that, it's a good chance that they've simulated an outlet valve shutoff leak. And what you come across with that is when you try to get the uh, differential or the relief valve opening point, when you're hooked all up, you open high, you open low a quarter turn, you'll notice it won't drop. So normally you'd open high a full turn, open low a quarter turn, you'll see it drop down to the RV opening point. It won't drop. Now this is very important. You can screw this up very easily. The first thing you're supposed to do on that diagnostic is shut these and then just open and close the number two shutoff valve. And it's part of the test. It obviously is not the case that it's not shut all the way because it's a temp, you know, it's a prep stand, but that is still part of the test. And in the field, you would do that. So then you try it again. And it's still not working. So you shut these. And then you have to do a bypass, right? So you go pull out an extra hose, hook it to one, open one to bleed it out, attach it to four, open one, open four, then you come back to your get kit open low bleed, and now you can get the differential pressure relief. So remember, you gotta open and close that, then you get your pressure relief, and then you have to get the outlet shutoff valve test, right? So 
or not the outlet shut, you have to get check valve twos against back pressure now. So now it's tricky, right? Because you have a two valve kit. I think the five valve kits, you can do it a little easier. With the two valve kit, you have to loosen this, get it back above a parent, close it, and then you get your check valve one reading and your um, outlet shutoff valve leaking your closed tight. One thing that we actually forgot on this one, and you would fail if you did this the way I did it, which we're gonna extra emphasis on this one now. When you do this and you have an, a leaky check valve two, which we'll simulate again, it's very easy to forget this. I actually just forgot it. We'll roll with it though. So when you're simulating a leaky outlet, leaky check valve two, So you put this here. Open four. Bring it back to a parent. Then you open this and you're dropping again. You actually have to close, have to keep this open or close this, bring it back to a parent. So you close high bleed, bring it back to a parent by opening low bleed, and it's called the second chance. So if they give you an, a leaky outlet shot or a leaky check valve too, you do have to do a um, second chance, they call it. But anyway, thank you for joining us on this video and I hope you learned something about uh, the diagnostics.